Hey all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at another mini PC stick running on Windows 10 from a WoW. This time it is called the NY41S. It actually comes in a few different configurations, but the one as reviewed is using the Intel Celeron J410S, along with having either 4 or 8 gigabytes of built-in RAM and up to 128 gigs of built-in storage. And this is another fanless model, just a HDMI spot on the front, although it does also have a mini display port built onto the edge so technically you can connect it to a secondary display and it also has dual band 2.4G and 5G Wi-Fi AC and claims to be pretty energy efficient running at 10 watts even under the full load and then they are using DDR4 for the RAM as well as an SSD for storage which is going to be faster than eMMC that was more common on entry-level mini PCs just about a year or two ago so here are the other variations of processors in fact that a WoW can offer uh, but again this is using the J1 10s. We'll find access just a quick start guide along with of course the mini computer stick itself. Underneath you'll find some different adapters if you are using it when plugged into power in different countries. It is using just a standard USB Type-C. Last but not least, you'll also find an HDMI extension cable, so if you find that plugging it directly into a monitor or TV is not going to be the best setup, you can plug into here and just get it a slightly longer length. Closer look at the NY41S, things that jump out include that it is a super compact desktop or mini PC. In fact, the last one that we checked out that was fanless was the Mealy Quieter 2Q that has fairly similar performance, but you can see that even that one seems a little bit larger by contrast. Of course, it's still going to be a little larger than a regular thumb drive or USB stick, but uh, overall definitely tiny for a computer standards. The entire body here is made out of a polycarbonate plastic with a few textures running across it that makes it a little bit easier to grip, although it might also attract lint and dust a little bit more. Uh, it is fairly slim, although there is kind of a bump towards the bottom, as you can see there, that is to make room for a Ethernet port on the edge. Not something that you'll find on all of these mini PC sticks. There's also a Kingsington lock, surprisingly, as well as the aforementioned second mini display port, which is all nice to see. And then on the other side, ports include two USB 3.0 ports, as well as a micro SD card reader. Here is the Type-C port for power. There's also a dedicated on and off button, and then that's pretty much it. So a super simple design. Other side does house a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Overall, a okay selection of I.O., I'd say. Let's take a closer look at the performance next. Although it is super compact, if you are using it for, let's say, more than 30 minutes, especially if watching back 4K videos and doing a little bit of light gaming on it, it does get a bit warm on the edges. Never gets too hot, but it is one thing to keep in mind. Our model with the 128 gigs of SSD is giving us around 90 gigabytes left out of the box once the operating system is installed. Again, running on a fully licensed 64-bit version of Windows 10 Home. In terms of the Wi-Fi reception strength, overall I would say it seems to be quite good, even though it is an integrated antenna instead of having something sticking out, which can sometimes further improve that reception. But using the AC network and 5G, I was able to get more or less four or five bars, even though we're a little bit further away from the router, so didn't notice too many hiccups there. And if we jump into the browser next and just do a very quick test, we can try and load back, seeing what happens if we search up a page, jump into The Verge. This is a fairly complex site, as a whole not doing too poorly, as you can see here. Uh, so overall, in terms of web browsing and reading back articles, you'll definitely get by. It's not going to be maybe instantaneous in terms of loading up heavier pages, as you can see there, taking just a second for some of these elements to render, but overall, definitely not bad. So if we jump into taking a closer look at the video watching experience, I have a 4K clip here that's being loaded on YouTube, and let's try to bump it up to the full 4K resolution. You can see that we don't really see too many drop frames at all as the video is playing along. About one is dropped now after a few seconds of playing back, but uh, certainly is still giving us a pretty smooth experience. Let's try buffering or going and scrubbing ahead. We see a bit more of drop. So now it's going up to around 14, 15 drop frames out of 1300. The latency doesn't seem to be an issue in terms of uh, having to wait too long and I can still enjoy the overall experience even though it's playing back at Ultra HD resolution. Maybe it's not going to be as instantaneous as a more powerful Intel Core i series chipset, but certainly isn't bad in terms of the overall usability as we can see here. 
housing things there. So this is a good overall, I would say, mini PC if you want to use it for media streaming, can certainly handle those tasks. Let's take a closer look at the raw kind of performance in terms of benchmarks. So again, the Celeron J4105, this is a quad-core processor clocked upwards of 2.5 gigahertz at the turbo speed and usually has a pass mark score of 2,927. This is actually a fair score, I would say, especially compared with other entry-level computers we've seen in a similar $200 price point has more commonly used in the past the older Celeron N3350 or the N3450, both of these which are much more popular choices, will typically get a score of under 2000 as you can see there. So with the performance that you're seeing here, about a thousand points higher, you are going to notice that in areas like web browsing, loading things just seem a slightly snappier, you don't have to wait quite as long, and overall fluidity of the UI is going to be just a little bit better. Maybe one of the only specs I would like to see upgraded would be the Bluetooth, since right now it is still using Bluetooth 4.0, and I think more and more devices, even budget computers, should start adopting Bluetooth 5.0. But overall Overall, definitely still is usable if you want to just connect it to a speaker or to wireless keyboards or mouse. As we've noticed for a while now, even entry-level computers like this using a Celeron chipset are also good enough to get you by for productivity tools, things like office and document editing, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet, even slightly more complex ones, uh, or even PowerPoints and Word docs, it can handle without really any complaints. So these are general homework as well as office work tasks that a entry-level computer even with these specs, doesn't really have a problem with. The Celeron series in general is not really recommended for things like video editing. For that, you'll want something generally, at least with a Core M, if not a Core i series chipset, and ideally with a better GPU. But for simpler things like just uh, editing a few photos, things like that, it can still handle all right. Of course, if you're trying to play back local games, it would be recommended to try out lighter titles or even older titles more specifically. So things like Half-Life 2, things like CSGO will work fine, even on limited hardware like this. But if you are trying to get into newer games, territory of uh, more demanding things like Cyberpunk or even Flight Simulator, that's definitely not going to be a good application to run on something so lightweight. Although you could always try cloud gaming services. So something I would recommend would be either Google's Stadia or Microsoft xCloud. So as long as you're connected to the internet, and since this has a relatively reliable Wi-Fi connection, it just becomes a portal where you can then play the games. So that is more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Wow NY41S mini PC stick. I think really how compact it is would be one of the best attributes, combined with the fact that it is a fanless model, so you won't hear anything running in the background. There's no real moving parts, which can also help it last a little bit longer. You can truly run this off the grid just using a power bank, which is pretty cool, has okay selection in terms of I.O. and enough horsepower for doing light tasks like watching back 4K videos, entertainment, streaming, web browsing. So you can check out more details if you're interested in something that is really compact, a fanless mini PC. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's the AWOW NY410S.